Okay, let's talk about refractometers. So uh, I got a DI fluid refractometer recently, which is supposed to be uh, a cheaper digital refractometer than what's available. Uh, right now to get a cheap refractometer, you have to get an eye refractometer, which is like $25 and is, can be challenging to read. It's helpful for espresso, but kind of difficult for filter coffee uh, strengths. Um, so I've had an Otago for three years, but these aren't available in the United States. They're only available outside of the United States because of um, legal issues with uh, VST. So VST is the, the probably the most well-known re digital refractometer, and it costs around $1,000, while an Otago is costing around $600 or $700, and a DI Fluid costs below $200. So I wanted to collect some data and see how they performed against each other. Um, so then I talk about this and I talk about some other data that uh, was collected by Socratic Coffee and then I did analysis for it. Okay, so I collected hot and cold samples. Um, for the cold samples, I took the hot sample and I just cooled it down with some uh, cold water. Um, and then I made these charts. So this is a scatter chart of um, DI fluid TDS measurement compared to the Otago TDS measurement. Um, so uh, I have the black line there that indicates this Y equals X. So if they have the same reading, they would be along that line. If they're above that line, then that means DI fluid is reading a higher um, TDS than Otago. If it's below the line, then um, it's reading a lower reading. So there's a slight offset set and this uh, grows uh, over, over time. So the slope isn't, isn't, um, is an increasing slope, which is a little concerning. However, if you cool down the samples, they're reading the same reading. Um, so what you need to understand from a hardware perspective of, um, from a hardware perspective is that the there's an algorithm underneath and the algorithm is using the refractive index that it's measuring uh, as well as the uh, temperature of the sample and comparing it to a calibration chart to tell it where the, the TDS estimate should be. Um, so um, one of the issues that the DI fluid has is that it's small, so it doesn't have a lot of mass relative to VST or Tago are, are, are much larger uh, sensors. So um, one of the other challenges with this data is I, I only had one, um, one refractometer. So there was some other data presented by other people and, th and they showed interesting results as well. But the challenge is again, they only had one sensor. And when you're talking about like quantifying a uh, sensor, you have to know, um, uh, have a better understanding of how that one sensor comes off of the line. So that's where uh, Socratic coffee fits in is they um, had a, uh, they got a bunch of these and they did some testing compared to Otago and VST. For both Otago and VST, they, they do come calibrated. Um, so they, they have like an actual um, uh, inspection. So they, they, and Otago and VST perform, uh, there's not a statistical difference in performance based on past data. Um, so you can trust that they, they should be falling in line with one another. And the other offset is that in these uh, sensors, you have to do some sort of calibration, but it's uncertain or un, uh, there's no data on how that calibration affects uh, final uh, results. So they took a bunch of data and they shared the data with me and I uh, took a look. So they also did uh, filtered and unfiltered samples um, while I, I just did un unfiltered samples. I still haven't seen data that proves convincingly um, that filtering does something to, to be more accurate. Um, okay, so let's dive into some of their experiments. So uh, they the, the first experiment they used is they used a solution of, of sucrose. Um, so you have, uh, this is uh, 10 grams of, of sugar to uh, 90 grams of water. Um, so uh, you you should read uh, uh, the, the TDS should be 8.5. 
Um, and uh, you can see that, that they took, they made this solution three times. And for each solution, they took three samples. So that's what you have below. Um, so in theory, you should have all the same readings. So if you look at the, the, dot, the two dotted lines, there's a t VST and a TAGO, and they both have, uh, they have a slight offset off of ground truth, but it, with respect to each other, they're very consistent. However, when you look at the DFT units, um, which is just the, the, uh, the, their script for uh, DI fluid, um, they, uh, they have a lot of variants um, across solutions, the three solutions, and even within those solutions, there can be some variants. And then there's a large, the bigger variance is across devices. So like if you had DFT1 and you did this test and you only had one device, you might think DFT has a little bit more noise, but it's pretty close to ground truth. However, if you have DFT2, which is that top green line, it's the very top line in this chart, you would think, DFT is terrible, or there's an offset, a calibration offset. Um, so then they, they did the, the, the next test was with instant coffee. So they took instant coffee and dissolved it. Now, uh, sucrose is the cleanest sample you can do use for refractometry. Um, and if you look at an eye refractometer, um, sucrose samples are very clean. It's very easy to see the line because you're looking for this line um, coming out of the refractometer. Um, so with instant coffee, this, you have three solutions. One of the solutions is way off for, for DFT2. Um, and you can see that uh, VST and Otago, again, this is, this is a lower TDS reading, but they, and they, they are under-reporting, but they are still consistent in their reporting, so, which is good because you want, you want to be accurate, but you also want to be consistent um, because if you can be consistent, then this is a useful tool. So even if you're off by a little bit, you, what you really want to know is uh, are your coffee samples improving uh, or not improving. Um, and so, uh, you know, you, you could be off by a large percentage and it really doesn't matter as long as you're pretty consistent. So not that the DFT in these, these cases is pretty consistent, uh, just not like uh, VST and Otago. There's a bit more noise. Um, and there's still this variant. So you, you could have uh, DFT4 and you could, you could be really off from ground truth and say these sensors really have a big problem. Or you could have a DFT5 and again, you're close to that VST in a tire reading. And so it might throw you off. You know, so what, that's one of the challenges of, of this uh, new sensor is trying to understand how uh, it's calibrated across the sensor population. Um, and again, we, I don't have this data for VST in a Tago. They, they're supposed to fall within a certain spec, a tighter spec um, coming out of the factory with some quality control. Finally, there's filter coffee. So uh, as these, these are harder, these are three ways to measure um, uh, ground truth and they, they get harder and harder as you go. Um, so in this case, ground truth was determined by a, a moisture meter that would take a sample and figure out how much water is in there. Um, uh, so again, you could, if, if you just had the DFT2 and Tago and VST, you'd, you'd you really have a problem with a VST and a Tago. Um, but the reality is these samples are, the, the sensors are, uh, have a bit of, of, of spread in terms of how they read. Now, part of this could be uh, just a calibration issue. It could be part of the equation that they use to produce TDS from um, the uh, refractive index. It's just, uh, it's difficult to know. Um, and the, the, the biggest thing of these, of, of all these experiments is that we need a bit more data. Um, it's hard to quantify the um, performance of these sensors with just one sensor. So uh, this is where, if, if you, if you take, take everything to the average, you can see the, the variation, which is why that sucrose reading is, is really small. Like for sucrose, for this high TDS measurement, um, there, there's not much air, right? And this is, so this is the, the percent air of the TDS measurement, which is why the, the filter samples are lower TDS, but the air that you're encountering is a lot higher because of these, uh, uh, these measurements. But as you can see, even Otago and VST, they have 
you know, uh, depending on the sample, uh, one to, to 6% uh, error rate. Um, so I, I think even for reading TDS on filter coffee is very challenging. And in, in my other test results, I found that TDS often behaves really weird around uh, 1% or below 1% TDS, where it doesn't have this uh, connection, this linear connection uh, that uh, TDS does at, at higher readings with uh, ground truth. So uh, my, my aim is, is to, to get more, um, more data, you know, I've, I've looked at a lot more data in the, my written articles that's come from Socratic Coffee and DI Fluid is coming out with another sensor. So it'd be fun to take some data on that. But again, this challenge is, you know, if you have a single sensor, how do you know the, the quality of it relative to, to uh, ground truth? And the, and the best you can do is say, if you collect a large volume of data, uh, how much spread does it have across these samples? Um, to understand if it's a useful tool for, for you. Because if it, if it has a large variance, then, then it's uh, problematic. Um, and uh, so I, I looked at standard deviation for these and you know for these three different experiments and, and uh, Otago and VST obviously have the, the, the lowest standard deviation. Why this, DI, this DFT2 device is, is uh, massive problems. Um, but what's important here is if you focus, if you blow this out a little bit, um, you can really see the differences between these devices. So you could get lucky, you know, you, you could get lucky and, and have a good good device, but even still, you know, you have this weirdness between this, you know, like instant coffee and filter coffee, where um, it just, it just shouldn't uh, have, uh, it, it shouldn't have this, uh, you know, difference between DFT2 and uh, uh, for uh, instant filter. There's a huge difference. Same with DFT1 for instant coffee and filter coffee. There's this huge difference in, in, in AR or DFT4 for instant coffee and filter coffee, um, which is a, a, a little concerning. And I, I'd be very interested in uh, having a deeper understanding of what's going on in the hardware. Because um, again, refractometry for coffee is uh, been around for a decade, but you know, the amount of data that's available for it and understanding how it actually works with respect to coffee has, has not been well, um, uh, well researched, which is what I've been trying to do with a lot of my articles. So um, I hope this helps in your, your understanding and um, uh, if you like my content, obviously, you know, check out more videos and uh, read. If you like reading, so I, I, this isn't an article. And uh, check out Socratic Coffee, they've done, they're doing a lot of cool stuff. Thanks.